Both Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt have vowed to rip up the controversial Irish backstop as they prepare for the possibility of a no-deal Brexit. But how is Ireland navigating all the uncertainty coming out of Westminster? One strategy is its Ireland for Finance project. Dublin is looking to make the nation a top-tier global location for financial services. And the man who launched the project is with me now. With us on set with myself and Manus is Michael Darcy, Minister for Financial Services for the Republic of Ireland. Uh, great to have you with us, Michael. Michael, thanks so much for joining us here on set. So it's your UK launch at the moment. What are you hoping to achieve? Well, we have a hugely vibrant sector in Ireland with 44,000 jobs directly employed in financial services. So what we want to do is add to what our current offering is and move Ireland up the value chain in financial services. Uh, Minister, good morning. Welcome to, welcome to Daybreak. Um, the question that comes to mind for me is encouraging more financial services, more banks, etc., is in essence bringing more, more banking risk into Ireland. Um, is the central bank equipped to take that on? Is the country, do you have the tolerance to take on additional systemic risk? Well, we do. And the risk, of course, is a European risk rather than just uh, an Irish domestic risk. So these are international banks who have moved, some of them have moved their headquarters from London, the EME headquarters to, uh, to Dublin, to Ireland. And uh, the regulation and the risk has changed. It's not like the way it was before the last crisis. So the, the connection between the sovereign and the institutions, well, that era is over. Michael, will the government come under any pressure from business groups and perhaps farmers who stand to lose the most from a no-deal Brexit? Will the government come under pressure from these groups to compromise on the backstop? Yeah, there won't be any compromise on the backstop. It's systemic towards the importance of Ireland and the success that we've had over a number of years. The backstop is an insurance policy. We don't want it to be invoked. We hope and expect that there will be a trade deal concluded at some point after the withdrawal agreement is, is, is agreed here in Parliament. It's been agreed by 28 governments, including the UK government, including the Irish government. Uh, so it's a matter of the House of Commons and the House of Parliament here uh, concluding the matter. Michael, one of the other one of the other big discussion points has been from the candidates in regards to the use of what's called Article 24. In other words, if there's no deal, look, we can we can come to an agreement under some old legislation and use Article 24, and we can still have no tariffs. So I've written down three options for you. You can have your own, of course. Is this fanciful, delusional, or perfectly rational? <laughs> it's probably a little bit of everything, um, but in truth. And nobody wants to go there. We hope and expect that a deal can be concluded. The UK have voted to leave the European Union. They're leaving the European Union. Uh, we're disappointed with that. The UK are our closest friends, our closest trading partner. Uh, the UK is Ireland's largest trading partner. We are the UK's fifth. So uh, it's in everybody's interest for a deal to happen. And we hope and expect that that can occur. There's a lot of talk that a hard, messy Brexit could lead eventually to a united Ireland, could it? It's difficult to predict that. Um, these, are, these are decisions to be made at some stage in the future. They're not years away, they're probably decades away. Uh, I think talk of a united Ireland is very premature. Uh, Brexit, the UK is leaving the European Union, as I said. We're disappointed with that. Uh, any talk in that, in that direction is very early. Michael, can I ask you, um, do you get a, is the government at home in the Republic of Ireland moving to a higher preparedness for hard Brexit? Is there anything additional that you are doing and implementing yourself uh, and the Taoiseach in preparedness for hard Brexit? Is it a higher risk in the cabinet now? No, certainly it is, Manus. Um, we had our summer economic statement last week um, in the circumstances of a negotiated deal. Uh, we have a, what we think will be a surplus of about 1.4 billion. In the circumstances of a no deal, a messy, uh, disorderly exit from the European Union, uh, we believe we may run a deficit of up to 5 billion euros. That's a 6.5 billion euro swing. Uh, that's a huge impact on the Irish economy, but we are preparing for the worst case scenario. Uh, we, ho we hope and expect that won't be the case, but we must prepare, and uh, we are. And just very briefly then, to go back to your strategy, how many jobs do you expect to be created? Well, we expect 5,000 jobs. It's not as ambitious as the previous strategy. Mm. We are accepting that uh, innovation and technology 
will have an impact upon the sector. Uh, the application of technology in financial services. Uh, I think nobody is saying that we will be where we were five years ago and we certainly won't be in that space five years from now. So it's 5,000 jobs. Uh, we will get to 50,000 directly employed jobs within the sector by 2025.